You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. is The Conscious Caregiver with author and elder care coach, Carol Ann Hamilton. Caring for uncopable aging parents, feeling stressed to the max, then you've come to the right place. Let Carol Ann restore some serenity by giving you concrete and sound solutions for challenging and aging parents. So now, please welcome the host of The Conscious Caregiver, Carol Ann Hamilton. A leading edge welcome, everyone. And I'm Carol Ann Hamilton. You are listening to The Conscious Caregiver. We are coming to you live from the BBM Global Network, TuneIn Radio, iHeartRadio, Apple Podcasting, and Spotify. And I, by now, regular listeners have this part memorized because this is the place where you get grounded and unique solutions that combine the practical and emotional aspects of how to successfully navigate the elder care marathon in a fashion that is unlike the typical content out there. So let's start with today's provocative question. If someone asked you, what is a caregiving leader? What would be your definition? For me, that answer can pertain to both those who give care and remember audiences like aging parents or other relatives, friends, neighbors, colleagues, maybe even young folks that you have responsibility for, as well as those who actually work within this growing and broad arena that is called elder care. Today, I plan to variously tackle both on the heels, folks, of an exceptionally trying week that has been replete with healthcare system challenges, broken promises, accusatory statements, and more. And by the way, we're not just talking individuals in their lives who have not honored their word or fulfilled their commitments. We are encompassing here at least three large which would be recognized organizations who occupy the elder care sphere on some level. And trust me, you would be horrified if you knew how they operate behind the scenes with contractors, partners, and folks like me. They shall not be named today, but maybe someday when my alter ego warrior woman is no longer prepared to hold her tongue, given movements like hashtag me too. Let's just say that my patience has been tried and tested to the hilt. And as a result, I shall be declaring some things up to that bar, which are not necessarily pretty. Ever since a couple of pivotal broadcasts over the past while, you recognize those as a spousal caregiving journey and selling the parental home where we saw me bear more than one previously buried skeletons in my closet to allow the chips to fall where they made. And valued audience members know I am getting sick and tired of sugarcoating some important themes that these caregiving worlds need to hear. So get set, that's all I can say. Now, one is what it actually takes to call yourself a true leader. Not just someone who looks great in the public realm, but when you peel away some of that superficial veneer, no one classy or dignified is anywhere to be found. Ever had that one? It's evidenced by the often used quotation, who are you being when no one is watching? 
And as loyal listeners know, my 25-year corporate career is littered with toxic bosses, so much so that I will be delivering a keynote next month about personal leadership under the rubric of diversity and inclusion for International Women's Day because leadership ought to show up every day of the week and not just wearing your finery on Sundays. Uh, Think in terms of our potent recent show where the central theme was, I just showed up. I have been wearing my wrist bracelet all week since Yvonne Heath was with us, and that's precisely what I want to get at. So here's how we're going to roll. I'm going to read you a self-authored poem from my book, Coping with Uncopable Systems, Advocacy for Elder Care, and we may intersperse some inspirations along the way. We will also define the being qualities that do and do not denote leadership in my experience. As the author way back in 2003, can you believe it, called the A to Z guide, or Z, (laughs) to soul-inspiring leadership. And it was especially crafted for the corporate arena, but now I've modified any content today to the caregiving context. That will also be followed by the actions of leadership, because many of you know my belief in the formula B plus do equals have. The being states that you bring to the table plus the doing actions that you embody equal having your desired outcomes. And you will have the opportunity to contemplate where you feel you are bringing it and where you feel you are not so that you can choose to make adjustments. I'm rhetorically asking, how does that sound? I hope your answer is that I am sounding quite provocative. In that case, my work here would be done as the call to action that today's show is intended to represent. And so I want to add some further context to a piece I wrote called An Ode to the Sandwich Generation. It will span this front piece and it will resume probably after a commercial break because unbelievably, I penned this Uh, poem within mere minutes and those who know me know I love to write poetry prose and more as an expression of my voice I well recall being in Vancouver Canada mere days after turning the keys in the locks of the home where I grew up for the last time in 50 years And I would say, talk about poignant and traumatic. The day itself was full of memories. And I was in Vancouver promoting under the insignia of the publisher of my first elder care book, Coping with Uncopable Parents, Loving uh, Action for Elder Care, while also helping a cherished friend to celebrate his 50th birthday a tad early. He considers Vancouver his soul's place, and anyone who knows the gorgeous scenery of mountains, water, and greenery would concur. Of course, if <laughs> if Prince Harry and Meghan Markle make Vancouver Island their partial home, more of the globe will soon see the beauty for themselves. So um, let me start this poem, and uh, I want you to know that it was written on behalf of the beleaguered caregiver and not the person who considers changing a colostomy bag as an honor or privilege, which is a true reference to that first elder care book. Remember, you're here with someone who stands by your side in coping with uncopable parents plus systems and who agrees you need not be a Mr. or Mrs. Florence Nightingale to be effective. And that's perfect because we're now going to take the break and then I can read the poem from front to back. So stay tuned, everyone. I'm Carol Ann Hamilton. You're listening to The Conscious Caregiver. We're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network, TuneIn Radio, iHeartRadio, Apple Podcasting, and 
Spotify. Stand by, everyone. The earliest human societies worshipped a female goddess. Little is known about this time because we did not always have a written recorded history. It was around 3100 BC when the Sumerians invented the first written language and everything that preceded this time is prehistory. The prehistorical record includes all of women's unwritten history from 30,000 BC to the time that men began achieving political power around 3000 BC. Male feminist artist Kimberly Berg maintains a strong position in educating and inspiring both men and women through his devotional art to the goddess in all women. Studying their history is paramount to understanding who women were and who they would become later living in a patriarchal society. To learn more about this important time in our history, go to www.isisrising.net. Unleash the obstacles that bind you with certified professional coach Joanne Charette, a master practitioner in energy leadership. Joanne can help you break through personal and professional barriers and guide you to a higher level of empowerment and fulfillment. Passionate and dedicated, Joanne engages with her clients on a mutual journey. Her dynamic energy will motivate you to move forward as you partner on a venture to greater results. Isn't it time to make a breakthrough and commit to live the life you deserve? Invest in yourself and let Joanne Charette be the catalyst to the real realization of your dreams by making them a reality. Based in Quebec, Canada, Joanne is also a space coach using social media and Skype to work with anyone anywhere around the world. Contact Joanne Charette today at 819-360-3266 or email her at actionrealization at live.ca. 819-360-3266. Now is your time. Okay, everyone, are you set? Because we're here today and you are listening to The Conscious Caregiver. We're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network, TuneIn Radio, iHeartRadio, Apple Podcasting, and Spotify. I'm your host, Carol Ann Hamilton, and we were just setting the context for the uh, the show theme, which is being a caregiving leader. And I was promising you to read from my book, Uh, a piece that I composed, an ode to the sandwich generation. And it comes from uh, Coping with Uncopable Systems, Advocacy for Elder Care. And anybody who feels like they are dealing with uncopable situations, I think will resonate with the following. So enjoy the ride. I'm going to read from you with the book. An ode to the sandwich generation. The journey will inevitably start. Prepare to tear your life apart. The state you've come to know as peace on that day shall inevitably cease. Get set for agony almost untold, feeling before your time very old. This process is not for the faint of heart, as every corner of your being comes to smart. Never mind the sinking dread while you begin your childhood to retread. Many a day there will be tears, at the same time learning to release your fears. Enduring as you do the daily toil, you should expect your blood to boil. Did you know you're allowed your parents to hate, even though many such a sentiment would be rate? You owe it to yourself the pain to heal. The key to that is permission to feel. If you decide to stuff it down, you create a recipe to drown. For the only way out is through, which means waiting smack into the goo. Just when you worry you're going to snap, out of the woodwork will ooze more crap. That's because you're moving into a choice, whether you're anguish to silence or to voice. No, this marathon is not to be run alone. It's a time to ask for support, skills to hum. Solo me has tried it all. It's a wonder the abbess didn't cause my fall. We haven't mentioned even self-care. You need to be extreme and take that dare. If you don't, you'll lose race. Plus your gifts to the world will erase. You owe it to yourself and every other. 
not to let this ordeal see your spirit smother. Believe it or not, there is a gift. When you locate it, you will sense the lift. After what seems endless gruel, the heartache shall transform into a tool. That will not happen until and before you courageously do an interior bore. Once you honestly look within, you'll be amazed to uncover strength like tin. You see, that's what was buried all along, a deserving you to celebrate with song while in the pits. You're sure there's no out. For decades, the same thing I've longed to shout, yet I'm here to unequivocally say there will come a moment to roar hooray out of the darkness. There you emerge, your old life now to forever purge. No one can doubt you did succeed. With aplomb, you performed every deed. Prevailing with elders is cause for pride. An emotional roller coaster took you for a ride. Despite every trial, you continue to withstand. Rise up, please, and strike the band. Though you may think you cannot cope, I am here to give you hope. Written by Caroline Hamilton, April 19th, 2013, in Vancouver, Canada. And I thank you for listening. Okay? So I hope you heard all of my inflections and received my message. Thank you for listening. And now we're going to slide into... What leadership being is not in Carol Ann's world. And this comes because so many of my coaching clients back into what is leadership, whatever that quality may be, by identifying what it is not. And on that same premise, here we go. L for leader. Lack-based. Already this one needs some explanation it is a close cousin to enervating that is coming up. And this is a person who rarely to never expresses gratitude for what is positively going on, even in their caregiving situation. And I get it because the focus is always on the stressors. However, I will draw your attention later to actor Will Smith's take while uh, regarding placing your attention upon others rather than always yourself. E for educating. As a coach, I find this one a very slippery slope because here's where we beg the question as to whether your advice or commentary is helpful versus when is it a judgment counseled under the guise of, well, I was just trying to help you. And when we talk about leader actions, I have a suggestion to make sure you stay on the respectful side of this razor-thin line, because educating is a quality that proves why everyone ought to have a charge-neutral coach, because friends and family can sometimes risk to get opinionated, and that is not always helpful. A for avoidant. Simple as this. Let's go back to our show uh, last year on coping with uncopable siblings. Do you remember the term, the responsible one? Hello. If you are a caregiving leader, there comes a time when you need to step up to the plate to do what's right by your elders and otherwise, period. I can definitely look in the mirror of truth and say, I did what it took. Even as a squeamish non-mother, do you think I enjoyed washing my father's soiled underwear? I hardly think so. And it is also not the D for demanding. This quality goes both ways. I know from when my father spent the last five weeks of his life in hospital, it did no good whatsoever to be aggressive with overburdened medical staff. 
Uh, but those are the moments I succeeded least. And that's the place that I will just stop now. Stay tuned, folks. You are listening to The Conscious Caregiver. We're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network, TuneIn Radio, iHeartRadio, Apple Podcasting, and Spotify. I'm your host, Carol Ann Hamilton. Hello, I'm Steve Fagan, and I'm president and CEO of Fagan Associates, but I'm also a life coach. I'm here to help you reach your dreams, goals, and objectives. As a life coach, it's my job to be your support, to be your teammate, to help you understand what is your dream, what is your life passion, and then together we work as that team to help you reach your specific goals. Life is worth living the best you can be. Working with a life coach, you're fulfilling those dreams and goals is your passion, and it's your way of living. Let me help you do that today. Let me help you really reach the best that you can be as a person and live the life you should be living. I'm Steve Fagan. I'm a life coach, and I'm here for you. Contact Steve Fagan at FaganAndAssociatesInc.com or call 1-800-239-2701. And I'll be glad to help you move forward to live the life of success. Reach your dreams, your goals, your objectives. We can do it together. Abuse happens every moment of every day. According to national statistics in the United States, every two minutes, someone is sexually assaulted. And every 10 minutes, a report of child abuse is made. Those currently struggling with abuse, or if you know someone who has been the victim of abuse, you are not alone. Whether physical, mental, emotional, or sexual, know there is hope. There is help there is healing. Author Tammy Hall has written a book from her own account of abuse called Journey of Courage that can guide you through your own personal journey of healing. Stop struggling through life. It's your story. It's your healing. And it can begin with the first turn of the page. Visit www.journeyofcourage.com to begin your path to becoming the person you were ultimately created to be. Healed. Hopeful happy. And folks, welcome back. We're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network, TuneIn Radio, iHeartRadio, Apple Podcasting, and Spotify. I'm Carol Ann Hamilton, and you are listening to The Conscious Caregiver today on the topic of being a caregiving leader. And as we've been going along, I read you my ode to the sandwich generation, and I hope especially beleaguered caregivers got value from that. We're just now talking about the six qualities that leadership being is not. We have covered off lack-based, educating, avoidant, and we're in demanding. And so this quality does go both ways, as I said. Uh, When my father was spending his last five weeks in the hospital, it did no good whatsoever to be aggressive with overburdened medical staff. And those were the moments I succeeded least. But at the same time, the downright verbal abuse I endured from overwhelmed teams who expected me to perform their duties for my husband when hospitalized a few years ago was totally unacceptable. We were treated no better than cattle, despite how respectful we strove to be. And I know that those individuals do not make the rules, but it is not okay to treat family members like dirt just because you are hard done by. So my advice is, can we stop the back and forth rudeness? And that brings me to enervating. And it is prompted by a fabulous podcast I listened to via Lewis Howe's School of Greatness with Dr. Christian Northrup about energy vampires. I wondered if this word would capture what I want to get at, and it does, because enervating refers to causing others around you to feel drained of energy or vitality. And here's where the poor be mindset uh, makes it always about them remember the responsible one even when you strive to shift them off their never better focus like an unhealthy friend who manifests one ailment after the other and never takes accountability for bringing most woes upon herself they constantly bring the conversation back to themselves 
do I get to say OMG and stop it? That brings me to R in the not for resentful. Now, because there are folks acutely listening for what I will say about this quality, let me be the first to declare that I have a long way to go on this point. I do carry more old baggage than I ought to, and it can be challenging for me to let go. Hence why my writing project for release later this year includes saying goodbye, letting go with dignity in class. Because how about we all learn together, even as I continue to master my own energy along with you? You may well be ahead of me on this one, and that's okay. All I ask is, what did you think about that list of leadership don'ts? If you had to pick a quality to improve inside of yourself, what would it be out of lacking, educating, avoidant, demanding, enervating, or resentful? As I said, I am working on resentment and the tendency to go all too easily toward complaint. Yes, I did put that into the airwaves so that you can hold me accountable. There is never a time I said I am perfect. That's what preachers who place themselves on pedestals do. This is not for me. I am best a work in progress. So if we're ready, let's start to dive into what leadership being is. And, you know, there can be a million definitions of such a vast term. So this is truly just Carol Ann's take, but I believe it's a good one. So let's go back through the letters of leader, starting with loving. And no matter how you slice it and dice it, we do need to come back to the qualities of grace and compassion. And believe me, I resisted here while composing my behind the scenes map because I like to give 100% permission to family members dealing with uncopable parents and uncopable systems to feel exactly as they do and to not pretend to be nicey nicey when that is not their reality. At the time I was in the throes myself of elder care, I could have given a rat's you-know-what about strictures to be loving. So I get it. Just consider this one as my suggestion for now. We'll move on to endorsing for the E. I tie this quality to Carol Ann's secret list of the five most poorly done skills in business, otherwise known as acknowledgement. And Mary Kay Ash of Cosmetics fame said it so very well over 50 years ago. And she said, everyone wears an invisible sign around their necks. Make me feel special. Make me feel important. And we used to call this one corporately catching others doing something right versus continuously making them wrong. Like an assumptive accusation that was lopped over the fence at me this past week when the person had not bothered to check their facts. And this was especially offensive given I'm a very organized individual. And this one smarted especially because my husband was back in hospital and I received barely a nod from them about our stress. I say to that, can you be a little kinder, please? A, authentic. This one is connected to loving in a certain way. And we are not saying you need to be anything other than how you feel. And I got to tell you, one of my greatest pet peeves for people out there who are always fine, it goes like this. Don't you find them slightly too precious? And I'm trying to do a tone of voice. Make sure you surround yourself with even a few caring friends, because as Dr. Seuss is widely attributed to saying, those who mind don't matter, and those who matter don't mind. I'll leave you there as we move on to decent. This aspect is the D in my eight-part model of advocacy for elder care. And it stands for decency because this is about doing the right thing, even when it is hard. 
I think I need to also place here some common courtesy, which I relearned this week is not very common, rather ignorance ruled. Excellent is the E. Now on this one, I'm going to have to watch myself for sounding preachy because in my books, excellence is clearly about honoring your word and fulfilling your commitments. So we'll just stop there and let you digest. We're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network, TuneIn Radio, iHeart Radio, Apple Podcasting, and Spotify. I'm your host, Carol Ann Hamilton, and you are listening to The Conscious Caregiver. Stay tuned for more. Dr. R.C. will share extraordinary resources and services that promote educational success as well as making a difference in the lives of all social workers as well as the lives of children, adolescents, and teens of today. She will have open discussions addressing many of the issues that we face about our youth and how being employed in the uniquely skilled profession of social work for over 18 years has taught invaluable lessons through her personal experiences. She will also provide real-life facts, examples, and personal stories that will confirm that why serving as a child advocate is extremely beneficial when addressing the needs of the whole child. Listen live Saturdays, 10 a.m. Eastern on the BBM Global Network and tune in radio as Dr. R.C. will provide thought-provoking information that will empower, encourage, and strengthen students, families, and communities across our nation. You can also visit her at SoarWithKatie.com. My Dreams, My Challenges, and Joys is an inspiring book by author Linda Genazzo. This real-life account of raising a child with autism from birth to adulthood takes you on a journey of compassion, love, and hope as it tells the incredible story of a devoted family and their beloved daughter. Together, they faced adversity and never stopped believing they would find the help they were seeking. A breast cancer survivor, Linda Genazzo has a giving heart. With a background in social work with the mentally ill and the homeless, Linda continues to help families in her community. And her book, My Dreams, My Challenges and Joys, brings greater awareness to autism and those families in need. To purchase your copy, visit www.lindagenazzo.com. It's also available on Amazon.com and BarnesandNoble.com. Don't delay. Get your copy today. Welcome back, everyone. I'm your host, Carol Ann Hamilton, and this is the Conscious Caregiver Show. We're on the BBM Global Network, TuneIn Radio, iHeartRadio, Apple Podcasting, and Spotify. And so today we are tackling the subject of being a caregiving leader. And we have already read aloud my poem on Ode to the Sandwich Generation. We've covered off six qualities about being a caregiving leader. So what that isn't, and now we're in the what it is. And so we're just talking about loving, endorsing, authentic, decent, and we stopped at excellent, just to round out your six do this qualities. And so uh, I recognize again, that I could sound preachy here, but really, don't get me started. When you have promised something to a person that you give care to, for instance, I feel strongly that the only two options are to follow through or to make sure it gets done by seeing through the task in an alternative fashion. Silence, avoidance, and lack of communication are not acceptable. Hey, don't believe me. Read The Four Agreements by Don Miguel Ruiz. I hope I don't totally destroy his name, but that's all I will say because I thank him for spelling it out way better than I ever could. And then we come to the R, respectful, which comes first, respect or respect? This is a paradoxical question I used to regularly ask during my corporate facilitations, and it kind of comes out as this. Even if you are not accorded respect by others, like the medical system, can you still give respect? 
Well, all I know is that I posted yesterday on Facebook a horse racing uh, image that was meant to denote crossing the finish line with a plum. And that's what we're talking about here today. So I would ask, out of loving, endorsing, authenticity, decency, excellence, and respect, which one of these would be a strength for you? I personally choose excellence. But if I had one quality that I'd like to beef up a bit more, I'd probably pick loving in the form of demonstrating greater patience and empathy toward those who do not embody my standards. And anybody listening who knows astrology enough to understand what it means to travel from being an Aries South Node to a Libra North Node (laughs) will get what I mean. Okay, so I laugh because uh, there are ways in which we do not do well with those who lack our standards of precision. And we are trying to come to a greater place of equanimity and empathy. And it is not easy. So I hope that in sharing what I just did, that you know that I transparently thought about all of this while I was preparing the behind the show map. And I have introspected on my strengths as well as areas for development I've shared some of those along the way, and I hope you will feel free to do the same just inside of yourself as you listen. Now, in this next segment, we're going to come to some leadership actions, and I'm pretty sure that they're going to stand you in good stead, both as a caregiver and in life in general, because after all, we're striving to be conscious here on this show, right? Hello, the title So let's go into L for laugh. And I would say, as overused a strategy as humor can be, it sure came in handy after an ultra stressful week when my husband was re-hospitalized while we try to figure out what is at the root of his symptoms. And he was pinpricked by blood and myriad tests. You can just picture he was pretty fed up. So when we were watching TV as he was home and we reimagined, oh my gosh, Canada's entire healthcare system in less than 30 minutes, we were both roaring with laughter and it was a great release. Now, as objectionable (laughs) as this would probably be for many of you, uh, you know those lists you can check off for food that you would like to eat? Okay. So we added the option of spa services and having a comfort cat or maybe a support dog brought to your bed overnight to keep you company. And only an animal lover would probably get how hilarious this was to us. Uh, Yes, we did account for the sanitary aspects, but we still felt these options should be on the list. And what you ought to take away is that these systems of society desperately need to be reimagined because they are working for no one, no one, Canada, U.S., and elsewhere. Okay, I'll stop there. Move on to encourage. Uh, Now, encourage, perhaps not in a traditional sense. After all, when did this broadcast suddenly become like the typical content out there? Rather, I mean, encourage the caregiver to speak their truth about how they're really feeling. And that is especially angry, annoyed, sad, and all those so-called negative, air quotes, emotions that society does not give them space to voice in the face of not just ridiculous elders, but also downright stupid stuff that they encounter while trying to navigate daily life. I will tell you, My husband likes to skirt conversations that he is uncomfortable with, and hence I still don't readily receive answers on vital points. Yet, if I were to try to make an appointment between me and his GP, how far do you think I would get? 
privacy laws, people, hackers, always find a way to get in. So let's get over the falsehood that big tech or big systems are protecting your information. Blazing warning signs. I will stop there by saying, please help the spouse or the power of attorney or executrix who was equally thwarted like I was by my father's physicians. We're going to go on from there in just a moment. I'm your host, Carol Ann Hamilton. This is the Conscious Caregiver Show. We're on the BBM Global Network, TuneIn Radio, iHeartRadio, Apple Podcasting, and Spotify. According to the American Nurses Association, there are approximately three and a half to four million nurses in the United States. So where do all these nurses work? What kind of roles do they have? What kind of education and training help to prepare them for so many different settings? What kind of impact do nurses have on patient outcomes? The World Health Organization has announced that 2020 will be the year of the nurse, honoring the 200th birth anniversary of Florence Nightingale, an international initiative called Nurse Nursing Now is underway to raise the profile of nursing. The National Academy of Medicine has convened a committee to create the future of nursing 2020 to 2030 that will focus on how the nursing profession can create a culture of health, reduce health disparities, and improve the health and well-being of the U.S. population. Learn more and join Joyce Batchelor on All About Nursing, Wednesdays from 7 to 8 p.m. Central Standard Time on the BBM Global Network. Animal lover, author, artist, and public speaker, Patricia Daly Life is a Renaissance woman in her own right. A lover of animals from a young age, Patricia lives on a farm in Virginia and has rescued neglected thoroughbred horses, keeping them or finding them safe havens. She is also a published author, and her books document real life experiences that she shares in her passionate stories, taking the reader around the world in a colorful kaleidoscope of life. An accomplished artist, Patricia Daly Life's oil paintings feature animals, portraits, stills, nature, and abstract, and she allows the brush to paint the image in an organic, natural way. A public speaker, Patricia is motivated to continually wonder about life and advocates for all of us to do the same and document our own unique history. To learn more about Patricia Daly Life, visit www.literarylady.com and www.patricialife.com or email her at pdlife at gmail.com. So glad that you're staying with us on this show about being a caregiving leader. This is the Conscious Caregiver Show. We're on the BBM Global Network, TuneIn Radio iHeartRadio, Apple Podcasting, and Spotify. And of course, I'm your host, Carol Ann Hamilton. And during this program where we've been tackling what a leader is and is not, we're just in the actions of leadership, and we've covered off laugh plus encourage. So we're going to go right into the letter A for ask. And if you are providing care or perhaps support to a friend, who is going through this journey in some fashion. I cannot stress enough the importance of asking what they need and not assuming that what you would need in similar circumstances is actually helpful or serving. Please do not impose your definitions. You might be very surprised that they are opposite to what the person would find valuable. And that ties right into decide for the D because it's about deciding a bunch of things, not the least of which is your boundaries. We have talked about those in the past here, and this action connects directly to ask because it's like the tell flip side. Please spend some time within getting very clear about what support means to you. How much checking in by friends, even well-intentioned, is too much? How do you best want to be supported, email, phone, maybe otherwise? As a caregiver leader, please take your cue from what the other person needs and not what your desires or comfort zones might be. And uh, people who listen in regularly know how I love Matt Kahn. And he talked recently about becoming a warrior for your highest ethics. Exactly. Because E for engage is that boundaries also do not mean to disappear. 
Far from it. I want everyone listening to do whatever you need to be present if you have taken up a caregiving role. I was just speaking with a friend the other day who is watching very carefully for the interests of an elderly relative despite running their own full life and business. And that's what we're talking about here. It is the absolute opposite of being avoidant. And that brings us to reframe whereby here's a good one from actor Will Smith in a recent issue of a low Canada magazine. He says, you can't achieve your way out of your childhood wounds and trauma. He indicates that happiness comes not from success, but from putting a focus on others. And this kind of wraps up a whole bunch of leadership being and doing, doesn't it? Because bottom line, what I'm urging is that we step up to the plate. Yeah, Uh, a shared friend who understands about me as well as any human can, that I'm really talking about nimbleness. And he said, this is a quality you don't often hear. We roared how, how a less comprehending friend would probably conclude that this means being agile. Nope. To be nimble is to be different from agile. One is masculine, the other is feminine in nature. And I'm going to leave you to contemplate which is which based on what we have been saying today. I know that today has been giving you lots to contemplate. And so how about we get out of the head and into some different modalities? And one of those I think I can encompass before we take a wee breather. And it is a song by one of my favorite um, reggae artists named Bob Marley. He would have turned 75 tomorrow. And in honor of his pioneering, provocative, um, society-changing songs, I would like to at least try to render (laughs) and not bastardize Uh, part of the stanzas of a song that he wrote when he was very upset about the oppression that occurred in Haiti when he visited. Mind you, it's not the elder care context at all, but it is uh, the oppression that caregivers often experience at the hands of uncopable parents and uncopable systems that force us into a narrow box about how we quote unquote should be. And his his song, Get Up Stand Up, kind of goes like this. Let me see if I can find my voice. Oh my goodness gracious. <clears throat> Get up, stand up. Stand up for your rights. Get up, stand up. Don't give up the fight. Preach a man, don't tell me. And then it goes on from there. Because we should not be told how we are supposed to feel or be. And that was nowhere the purpose of this show either. Rather, I wanted to encourage you to think about what caregiving leadership is for you. What is it not? What is it, according to the letters? What being states do you now wish to embody, actually choose to embody? What states are no longer working that you choose to release? And I reiterate that I am accompanying you in this process very actively after the week that I have had and that has prompted much uh, contemplation, shall we say. So on that note, I think it would be worthy for you to consider what are your takeaways from today? Maybe 
one thing that you're going to release, maybe one quality that you're going to adopt, one action that you might take that makes a difference in your caregiving world, whatever that may be, whether it's aging parents or relatives, friends, neighbors, colleagues, dependents that you connect with. Either way, there is so much opportunity out there to make a difference, and I hope you will take it. So either way, I hope my singing woke you up, <laughs> or if nothing turned you off. And on that note, we're, we're going to say this is the Conscious Caregiver Show. We're on the BBM Global Network, TuneIn Radio, iHeartRadio, Apple Podcasting, and Spotify. I'm your host, Carol Ann Hamilton. Stay tuned for the last segment. Horses, mystical, present, past, and future, all in one. Wild, free, domestic, and healing for everyone. Betty Hames knows this and has put her horses to good use with Nature Connect Equine Coaching. Her mission is to help people affected by the loss of hope and trust in their lives and to rediscover the wonders of nature through nature-connected learning so they can rebuild their lives and live peacefully with newfound hope, trust, and joy. Betty Hames is also a certified elite life coach, a Washington State certified counselor, and chemical dependency professional. She is passionate about partnering nature with healing, and through horses, she sees amazing results and transformation in lives that might have otherwise been lost. Call 509-830-9225 and visit her at HamesLifeCoaching.com. Hold your horses. You're in for the ride of your life. And here we are on the BBM Global Network, TuneIn Radio, iHeartRadio, Apple Podcasting, and Spotify. I'm your host, Carol Ann Hamilton, and this is the Conscious Caregiver Show. Our theme today being, being a caregiving leader. So you've received lots. You've got lots to think about. As I started out saying, uh, if this was a call to action today and it provoked you in any way, shape, or form, then my work here is done. Now, at the time of broadcasting, the uncopable systems of society saw fit to, I can't say it any other way, screw up my husband's important specialist appointment yesterday. This was very, very trying, folks, after a week in hospital. So I'm going to be practicing for myself what it means to be a caregiving leader, and I'll let you know how I made out in taking my own advice next week. Uh, in this same time, same place, we are looking forward, going ahead, to featuring some distance healing techniques that will keep your energies high as much as possible in light of your myriad caregiving responsibilities. We further anticipate hosting the provider of an in-home support service who has a lovely and moving story to share about his grandfather. I met him a couple of months ago through a workshop on uh, death and dying, starting the conversation. And I was so impressed to have him on because I'm sure no matter whether you reside in Canada or the United States, there are many sources that you can use to actually bring home care into your household for aging parents, relatives, and otherwise. But I don't choose to feature the resources that are local because I have not, uh, let's just say, had good experiences with them with my father when one of them suggested, well, why don't we just sell the family home to afford his in-home care? Really? That was your only solution? So I'm pretty sure that this young gentleman is going to have a far more compassionate message to share with all of us. And then all of that should probably bring us to the power of visioning as a caregiver. And it will take two forms. 
One will be, do caregivers actually have the right to vision even while you're in the throes of elder care? My answer is a resounding yes. What would be Carol Ann's vision for caregiving as it regards people in their lives as well as society in general. So I think you're going to see some very interesting takes on the matter. That's not to mention uh, the launch of a series of talks about Carol Ann's top 10 caregiver peeves. So for right now, I want you to sign up for a confidential readiness session, and that can be found at copingwithuncopableparents.com or by sending even an email to carolann at carolannhamilton.com. Always a reminder that you can catch my archives at boldbravemedia.com, shows the conscious caregiver under self-help or health. And for now, I'm going to say that my encouragement is to breathe in what we have been talking about today and to breathe out that which no longer serves. I've said it before, other guests have to breathe in to a count of four, hold it, and breathe out to a count of four because the breath is one of the ways that we can help to heal ourselves. On that note, you know how it goes. You've been strong too long. How about you dare to care with flair? We're on the BBM Global Network, TuneIn Radio, iHeartRadio, Apple Podcasting, and Spotify. I'm your host, Carol Ann Hamilton, and this is The Conscious Caregiver Show. Thank you for being with us. You've been listening to The Conscious Caregiver with host Carol Ann Hamilton. For a fresh and unique approach to modern caregiving, listen to gain a weekly dose of inspiration and down-to-earth advice right here on The Conscious Caregiver with Carol Ann Hamilton. been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company.